Hello, it's Sarah. Back for part two of this little holiday lampshade, I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it a winter lampshade. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take the pattern or whatever you're using. For me, I'm using this pattern that comes in uh, this pattern packet that I will put in the description box. But use whatever you have. If you have a little snowman stamp, stamp it right on here with permanent ink and you can paint along with me. Kiwi, what are you doing? Okay, so what I've done is here's her tracing, right? This is her pattern, um, Renee Mullins. You need a piece of tracing paper and you're going to lay it on top and you're going to trace with your pencil. And I like to trace all, well, I didn't. See, I lied already. I'm going to line this up and I'll come down so you can see what I'm doing. Um, but I like to wing it too. So like I, do, I don't put all the little detail lines because I do that freehand. But you can trace on every little detail that's on here if that makes you feel comfortable. Okay, because this is what you're going to use to um, put, the, put the pattern onto your surface, which I'm just using 90 pound watercolor paper that I cut out using a template that my husband has uh, created a PDF for you guys. So you just go to, in the link, hopefully it'll work. We're figuring that out. <clears throat> and you're gonna take, if you're using a tracing, okay, the template, let me go back to that real quick. All right, so here it is. You're gonna take your template, so you're gonna just print this out on the computer and either trace this onto a piece of um, watercolor paper. Just trace it using graphite paper. Oh, I'm zoomed in. I'm so sorry. Um, using tracing paper because this is just paper. It won't last very long. Or you could trace this onto cardboard and then you'll have a solid um, template that you can use for over and over and over. Um, so once you have that, then you're going to trace that onto your um, watercolor paper and then cut it out. And you'll have this little lampshade. And the reason you're going to use the 90 weight, because it's softer and it will um, be able to fold into a little lampshade shape. So you're going to end up making a lampshade. This, you know, if you want to. If you don't, you can make it any shape you want. All right, so I'm going to take this and actually... I used, um, I'm just going to move this real quick. I used my, just to line it up straight. So I just put this kind of close to where I think it would be centered, right? So here's the center. So then I'll take my pattern, um, the little snowman. I kind of want to do the kitty cat. Dang it. I want to do the kitty cat. But anyway, I'll do I'll do that off camera. <laughs> See, that's the thing with me. I once I've done one thing, I want to do something different. I'm not a um I don't like to keep doing the same thing. All right, now I also trace the outline of the ornament that this this pattern is done on an ornament. And if you go to the website, you can order that whole thing. So I'm going to leave that part out. You're going to need a um, stylus or a ball tool. But get this lined up in the center. So here's my center line. Kind of leaving the amount of space between his head and the top and here and the bottom the same. That's how I'm doing it. And then I also extended the branch along the bottom. I'll show you. And I also was gonna um, add writing on the back. I was I was gonna. You can do so much. It's so fun. Like I'm so glad I'm back <laughs> in here. I've been having fun. All right. So you're just gonna hold this in place. You can tape things down. Do whatever you need to do to to get this on here. And this is such an old beat up piece of um, what is this called? Graphite paper or carbon paper? Whatever you have in your stash. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And then I'm going to, I personally just put on the main outline of the design. And 
end. You want to make sure your um, graphite paper is on the right side because you can trace this whole thing and not have anything show up because it's upside down. But let's double check. I'm going to just hold it. Yep, you see? Okay. So I'm going to continue. I should have done this off camera and then uh, had one ready to go. And that way um, you don't have to watch me. Oh, this is his arm. Eh, I don't need to put his arm right now because that's going to go on top after we paint his little body. These are snowballs. Um, yes, I'm going to put this birdhouse on here. Um, am I going to put this? Yes, I am. Because this is a little bit different than it would have been if we were doing it on a wooden surface because we're using watercolor paper. I'm kind of going to do this in washes of color. So we're not going to do it opaque. I just have to see where I've been. Um, i got to put the little birdie on. Little cardinal. I love her cardinals. They're so they're little square faces and everything. It's so cute. I'm gonna put his face on, and I don't need to put his wing. And then the branches. Now, like I said, I'm gonna just roughly put a branch here. And I'm kind of extending it out, but I'll do that freehand. Feel free to embellish this however you want to. But I am so thankful to these artists that um, publicate that uh, publish their designs for us, so that I don't have to think and I can just use their design. I think we're good. And if you weren't, I'll show you how you correct that. Like I missed a spot right here to connect this branch. But that's, it's not a big deal because I know where the branch is. You know what I mean? It's not like a big deal. All right, and then even his arms and stuff, I can free in his arm after. Um, his eyes, all that stuff. This is good enough. Actually, in this case, you may want to put them all on because the next step is to take my um, Micron, Pigma Micron number three. I chose to use a number three, but you can use a five or a one or whatever, but it's a permanent ink, and I'm going to use the tracing, and I'm just going to look at it while I do this. So I'm going to have this right near me. But on my original, I didn't outline the, what is this called? Like, um, I think it's a, like a fir tree or like a pine needle drawings, right? Um, so I just really, I didn't do his arm. See how I didn't put ink on his arm? I just did do the main outlines, and then I, I left some of the things, um, so some of the lines aren't done with the pen, but you could literally put every line on here, and if you use the stamp, your lines are going to be whatever the stamp put down there for you, So and you don't have to do this step, but for me, I'm going to do this step, and actually, I'll go off camera, but basically just follow the lines and I love to turn my piece when I'm working I always um, need to feel comfortable and so I can pull or some people like to pull or push their strokes or their pen stroke you know it's just however you feel most comfortable but working on a small piece like this you will see me I just turn it to create whatever see how it's easier for me to pull the line so I turn the piece all the time and then you can erase um, if I don't go exactly on the line um, I will erase that now I, I missed out on the whole bottom of his scarf so I'll show you how we fix that this is going to be painted black the roof I'm not really using that, but see, I missed out on this whole line here, so I'll show you. 
but this little roof is going to be painted black so I'm not that worried about like that line right there going out of lines is not that we're gonna um, you can erase it circles sometimes get crazy oh, I lose and my pen doesn't seem as black as I'd like right now uh-oh, Kirby was upstairs. She's bad. She gets in the trash cans upstairs. I had to get all um, covered covered trash cans in my house. She's so annoying. She's a little uh, shorky, Shih Tzu Yorkie. And um, I think she's a scavenger dog. Like I think in nature, or if she was a wild dog, she would be like a scavenger dog. She's only 11 pounds, and I love her. She's awesome. Even though her middle name is um, Do For Me, me and Joe call her Do For Me, because it's just, she's bossy. She's always telling us what to do. She's very, very bossy. So I'm just gonna use this and just connect up to there so that's just that piece of that branch and then this one I kind of I ch I added this like on my original see right here like I might put some little belt bear up uh, sorry you can't even see it some of those um for pine needles there I don't know I'm embellishing I'm changing it up and I'm pushing really hard and I'm losing the ink so I don't want to push that hard But I could use, uh, you don't have to outline it with this black pen, but I like it. So this is all I did on this one. See how I just continued the line? Oh God, you can't because, all right, let me come up and then I'll, I'll finish off camera, but wait. So I just finished like that and they don't perfectly connect. I mean, I could have, I could go back in and add some color there, but I don't care. Um, Kirby, what did you do up there? What did you do? Yeah, I know. I know what you did. Um, all right, so here's what I wanted to show you, how you would then go back in and add a line if you forgot something or you wanted to add something. Um, let me see something on here. See, the reason I didn't put the lines on my scarf in black is because they're colored. I mean, if I put a black line there, it would look fine, but then I wanted to put the colored lines. And like, I could do a black line for his little um, arm twigs, but I wanted it to show up as brown, like a little twig. So it's, it's personal preference, and there is no wrong, so don't worry. But you're just gonna take this, and then you're gonna line this back up with it, because you can see through it. And as best you can, you will line that up. And then I can go back in and, which I didn't, I mean, it's, I could freehand it too, but I'm just going to show you if you don't feel comfortable with your own work, there you go. Just add it in like that. And like, oh look, there's a, a piece I forgot here too. There's another piece of the, um, that's a piece of the branch. So I forgot that on my original one too, and I wish I hadn't put that line right there. But there's another piece of um, the branch there. But I did end up putting it on here, say. So it's like a little bit darker paint there. But you can't tell. It's so cute. All right. So let me just finish the scarf. And I think we're good. Now I just want to show you, I am, when they talk about erasing um, graphite lines, I have so many erasers. Okay, let's just show you this. Because I have everything, you know, it's like, I feel like I can't go without anything, but it's not true. So use what you have. This pink pearl is just your standard grammar school eraser. This erases great. 
This is the White Magic. I forget. I think you use this like with pencil, charcoal pencil, if you're doing art with that. I think this is a kneaded eraser. Not really, but it's a gum eraser or something. I don't know. And here's a white pearl. So there's a pink pearl and a white pearl. And any of these will work just fine. But I also have this, which I love these. This is just a Pentel click eraser that you get at the dollar store. And I, I use this all the time. So let's go in and just, I'm gonna just show you that you can clean up your graphite lines. Even if you do this on um, a wooden surface, you can erase graphite off of um, base coating. Like it's not totally coming off. Let me use this white pearl. I think that's working a little better. Let's use this pink pearl. Pink pearl really works good. But anyway, it's a, you don't have to worry about that. The paint is going to cover it up. We're going to put glitter. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to show you. Well, I'll show you. I could show you at the end. But um, this stuff, and I thought I would never use it, but I am totally psyched. This is called Glitterific by Folk Art. It was $5. That's why I almost returned it. But I'm going to use it. So I just put that on top of him. And it's glitter effect. So you get a little shine and a little glitter and whatever. And I mean, you could paint it all over this whole thing. Anywho, $5. So use your coupons. All right, so that's all I really need for to get started with him is to have some um, outline of where we're going to go. And we're going to start painting. Put all my erasers away. I'll be right back. All right, I'm ready to go. I personally like to use palette paper. Again, if you have some, wonderful. If you don't, you can use a paper plate. You can use whatever you have to put your paint down on. So you're going to need to make little puddles of paint that you're going to pull from to, to paint your piece. But I also use this because I like to float. Floating is my way of shading and highlighting. And I can load my brush on um, palette paper. I'm gonna, let me just show you the front. Um, I don't have a front. <laughs> I ripped off the, uh, wait, let's see, I have more here. Nope, wait a minute. I totally do, I just don't know where I put it. Oh, here it is. This is, it's literally called palette paper, and it is a smooth surface, so it's like plasticky. You can kind of see the shine on that. Um, and I have a couple some old paper towels and new paper towels. I just like to fold them up because you're gonna need to blot your brush on here because you don't need too much water. These are the paints I'm gonna be using. I just gathered them up beforehand so that hopefully I don't take too much time fumbling around for paints and things. You're gonna need a water source. Mine is disgusting. <laughs> well, my, my bucket is, but I like these buckets because I do use those ridges on the bottom of this side to kind of um, just run your brush along the bottom to, to kind of clean it. Um, and away we go. So in the previous video, in the part one, I did talk about brushes. Use what you have, but I also uh, recommended this specific set that I am going to, I'll have it listed in the, um, I put the packaging somewhere. Man, I'm burping a lot. Excuse me. Craft Smart. It's Craft Smart. It's an eight pack, and I'll find it and I'll show you. Um, but I've chosen to use uh, flats and rounds and an angle brush for shading because I love to shade with angle brushes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put um, some color on our snow. Actually, you know what I didn't do is um, finish the uh, branches. So let me just do that real quick. I'm just going to use my pencil first and just make a jiggly. It could be thin and thick and just continue uh, something like that. And then uh, I will use my ink pen to uh, finish it off. So, um, 
for the snow, we're going to undercoat for, um, and I think she wants us to use, um, it's either camel, I think I'm going to use antique white, let's see, um, sand, she said. So I told you, I just bought something called sand, and it was the same exact color practically as antique white. So I'm using antique white and Americana. And I basically just take a little, a little bit because we're going to do washes. We're not doing opaque painting today. I want you to just, um, don't worry about getting it solid. And because this is an undercoat, I'm going to use the number eight, or it's a 10 actually. So I go to my water first. Just get the brush loaded up with water. It's brand new. Blot it on my paper towel. And then I'm going to pull from this puddle. So I'm just pulling from the edge of the puddle. Flip the brush and do the same thing. This is how you load your brush. And because it's watercolor paper, it is going to just grow. You know what? Let me I'm going to rinse I'm going to start again. I want you to pre-wet the surface. So I just have water on here. I forgot. I forgot I was on watercolor paper. And I'm just pre-wetting the surface because this will keep you from going out of the lines a little bit. Um, you can do this with a, a, a round brush too, but I am just going on the snow. So I don't want it to go on the birdhouse, the bird, the branch. Just pre-wetting the surface so that if I get a little crazy because I do um, a little impatient I'm working on my patients I'm just gonna um, it'll help protect me from going out of lines and I would just do my best oh you could have um, a q-tip handy I always have q-tips handy when I'm painting because that's a great tool for picking up paint where you don't want it all right so it looks like all my white surfaces are pre-wet right now. Okay, good. Now, I'm gonna go back in and load my brush gently. I don't want too much paint on the brush. I want mostly water. And I'm gonna try and stay in the shot, but I get uh, very excited when I'm painting. You want more water than you want um, paint, actually. But this is an undercoat. So don't, it doesn't matter, we're going to stipple on top of this with white. And then this color is going to shine through as the shading. So, but you want it to stay fairly uh, transparent in a way. You know, don't worry if it's um, light. You, oops, well, that's a shame. I just got paint on the, um, because I'm rushing. I'll paint that white at the end, don't worry. But see how I move the piece? Take your time. I'm supposed to be in Zen mode right now. This is my serenity. It always has been. My voice is calming down. Calm down, Sarah. But it, it also gets me very excited to be in here again. And see how well this brush is doing because it's a brand new, it's cheap, it's cheesy. I didn't pay $3 a piece for these brushes. Well, I might have because if it was 8 bucks. Um, but yeah, you're going to be able to really have good control um, with these brushes if you just bought them. So I, I'm just keep going into my water, making sure my brush is wet because that's on a piece of paper. It's sopping up. I mean, I guess we could have sealed it. Um, I could have sprayed it, and so that might have made it um, a whole nother way to do it. Oh, i got to paint my snowballs. Um, but this is a porous surface right now, so it's the paper is going to suck up the paint. That's Jenny. She just got... <gasps> Are you home? They just went for a walk. All right, that's that. Now we're going to do our branch which I think is milk chocolate. Yep, milk chocolate, and I happen to have that in my stash, but this is what it looks like. 
So I have so many browns. Like this is mink tan, which is much lighter. I think this is closer to like um, a, a burnt sienna, a raw sienna. Look, OMG. This is raw sienna. It's the same thing, practically. So don't worry about that stuff. Let's just do our branches. And then I'm going to put stuff out for our birdhouse, which I think I'm just going to use. I should just use the same color. I'm going to use the same color for the birdhouse. She used a little bit of a darker color, but I'm not... I'm going to do it. I'm doing it like this. Or we could even use the same color as the branch. But I'm using this color. And I didn't pre-wet my birdhouse, so I'm, I'm jumping the gun because I'm impatient. But just, you know what, let me just pre-wet it with a little bit of a dirty brush. So I have mostly water on my brush. But there is a little bit of color. Because, um... This is just making it so much more simple because you don't have to use a million different colors. It's going to look cute. And once we highlight and shade and everything, it's going to be so great. Don't worry. Don't worry, guys. Okay. So look at that. Now we've already based in our... I'm going to go a little darker. Just a little more solid. I am a super fast painter as well. Um, so don't feel like you have to do what I'm doing. Take your time. Enjoy the process. Be in the moment. That is my mantra these days. Enjoy the, enjoy the journey and the moment. Um, that's all you can do. Um, all right, so we were going to do the branches. That is going to be milk chocolate or raw sienna or I already put it out. Okay, so I'm just going to take this brush again. And just pre-wet the surface. Try not to go out of the lines. And then if you're getting a little bit um, hasty like I do, and your paint, your paint might stay in the lines better. I don't know. I really would like to take um, a watercolor class where someone really explains to me the whys and the hows and the, you know, because I feel much more um, confident if I know why I'm doing something and why not to do something. It, it just helps me um, understand the process better and I uh, haven't been able to find that. Teachers aren't uh, always, they don't always teach the way I'd like to be taught, you know. Um, Alright, so now just with my same brush that's, uh, I'm just going to pull from that puddle just a tiny bit of paint. You don't need a ton of paint. You're, see, like I put out a tiny bit of paint. And I'm keeping zoomed up because I want you to see what I'm doing with my hand. So when I'm over here, this is water. I'm blotting and then I'm going to my paint. All right. When I do the details, I will um, zoom in and really show you uh, the process um, up close. But for right now, we're just putting some color down, really thin color, washes of color. And um, you don't have to be opaque. It can be thin and um, it can be patchy looking because that might give it some um, depth and uh, character. You know, it's a branch, so it's round, it's going to have... Uh, bark on it and and you know be knobbly and all that stuff so if, if it's if it looks blotchy and um, a little discolored here and there it's going to add character so that's what makes this um, awesome as well it's not realistic but it's um, quick and easy and I'm using just the tip of my brush I don't really have any paint up in here this is called the ferrule I don't load my brush all the way up to there because I'm, I'm not going to use any paint if it's up there. I only need what's on the, the end of the bristles. And that way you have more control. Um, this brush is really working nicely. It's keeping a nice chiseled edge. I need more water in my brush. I like that it has long, it's long some brushes are more stubby, the, the bristles. This holds more water, so I'm holding water in there. I have a little um, reservoir of water that can 
come down. That's how I would describe it anyway. Um, and I use the side of the brush a lot. I don't always use the... Uh, I like to use the chisel. These brushes do a lot of different things. But for base coating, I feel like I get a nice edge. I have a lot of control. A lot of people, oops, and I, I'm just rushing, so I just stuck my finger in the wet paint. My nail. My nails are so long. Because I haven't been crafting, I can let them grow. But I'm going to cut them off again. Oh, and I don't want to forget. Hi, hi, Jin Jin. How was your walk? Was it nice? This little piece of branch. And then I think the inside of that is darker brown. So it's like a burnt umber. The carrot is the orange. And we're going to do the scarf a purple. And I, don't, I didn't have those colors. So I'm going to go off camera. And I'm going to finish this. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to do a part three. So, um, that'll be the details, all right? So, I'll be back. Thanks for watching. All right, I came back real quick because um, I've moved into my round brush. And what I want to tell you about this, it's the number three round. It's not as, there's not as many bristles. So, it's not as thick this way. It's got fewer bristles. So, that makes it more flimsy. Um, I have painted um, my little bird and I'm undercoating him with green and then when we put red on top of it it makes it much more um, vibrant the red so you don't have to do too many coats that happens a lot red is one of those colors that the pigment it's interesting I don't know the science of paint but I've heard it a lot in during my painting years um, so you generally will do an undercoating with uh, red. There are probably other colors. So see that little section of the um, cardinal space? It's black. So I load the brush. I'm doing with black. I'm doing it more opaque. So I'm not watering it down as much. And I'm just really, but still, I just use the tip of the brush, the tip of the bristles, and gently like a pen almost, just paint it in there because this, these bristles are a lot more pliable. They're not as stiff. Be careful because just move slow. I just tend to move too fast and um, you'll, you'll regret it because, you know, you want this to look cute. So there's that and then I'm rinsing that brush and I'm going to grab some, uh, I, I, this time I think I'm grabbing some, some straw. It's basically just a yellow color. Let me show you. Here's my straw here. This is straw. It's just a yellow, but it's like a mustardy yellow. So, you know, whatever color, it's a beak. I mean, it doesn't have to be a specific yellow. This beak can be whatever color you want. It can be like brownish, like tan. You could probably make it the same color because we're going to shade and highlight. Well, no, we're just going to shade it. So I put a little yellow there. I'm going to paint the him red so I did the undercoating with green it's probably still a little wet but I just wanted to show you that um, I'm going to I have a wet brush um, Kiwi you are so sweet she is just preening and kisses she is just preening herself having such a good time up there on my shoulder oh my goodness I love her all right so I'm just gonna go right over the green gently like a pen. So I'm holding my brush like a pen and really focusing because I don't want to go out of the lines. But this is a little more um, bendy. Is I don't know. I can't explain it, but um, if you get this brush set, you'll see what I mean. But look how bright that is popping. And, you know, I could have added berries. So, you know what? I might come back and just put a few little places of red berries um, along the uh, holly just to um, add more pizzazz, you know? This red is so gorgeous. It's, oh, see, I went out of lines. 
This red I'm using is called Country Red. There are so many reds, like this is called True Red. And we're gonna highlight, um, so <laughs> this is a pretty color though. I do use this Country Red, actually I have <laughs> one. I had these in my stash. I have three of these right now, so these are upside down because they're running out. So I have liked this in the past. I do like it. But I've also painted a lot of her um, projects, like those big um, porch sitters I did last um, winter. That was totally with this red, so that's probably why I have it. I just want to show you, too, I'm going to use some um, white. This is called titanium white. And I'm just going to kind of dry brush over where I made a mistake. I don't have a lot. Okay, I need a tiny bit. So I'm just going to take, um, I'm just going to use that same brush and just pick it up without any water really in my brush. And I have a lot of paint on there. But I'm just going to use the tip and kind of See if I can get rid of that like mark. I actually did that on this one. I was gonna emboss on here and I still may try to do that on here. I don't know that um, watercolor paper takes embossing that well like because it's um, if you're not using a super smooth paper sometimes the stamp doesn't so that's probably what happened but you could I have a snowflake stencil that I might just stencil but I really wanted to use um, I have really cool embossing powder like glitter embossing powder um, I have a pearl embossing powder so super cute uh, ways to embellish this and that's all I wanted to do I love to embellish all right so now we're ready for number th for part th excuse me I'm burping so much for part three um, so I'll be back with part three and we will finish this little guy up. It's so cute already. All right. Thanks for watching.